Hi everyone, this is Jay Johnson with DailyTexture.com. It is 4.30 in the morning here and we are still snowed and iced in in Tennessee and I'm up having my coffee and I decided before I continue on with the new texture collection I'm working on, I wanted to work on one of my bird images. I have spent the last five days that I've been snowed in well, I've been snowed in four or five days. We've been able to get out once. Um, but I've spent the rest of the days photographing the birds um, on my patio by my studio. And I've got bored with the portrait shots and started wanting uh, trying to get flight shots. So I decided to work with one of these photos I got um, of one of the flight shots. This is a common grackle. It's one of our noisy blackbirds that everybody hates. But they've been coming to the feeders and the patio because they're, they're starving and it's cold. And I've really got a close-up look at some of these birds. And there, there's several different kinds of blackbirds that are coming in. And it's interesting to me the differences and the color patterns and especially this grackle, he, he really has quite a few pretty colors in him. So I've decided to try to work with this picture. And, and don't you hate it when this happens? You get a good flight shot and then you it, it's off in the corner or a wing is cropped off or something like that. But I just love his pose and the look on the determined look on his face. And I thought, I really want to work with this photo. And that's the beauty of working with textures the way I do, is I blend them as backgrounds. I design them to be used as backgrounds and as layers on top, such as in soft light, overlay, multiply modes. And because I use them as backgrounds, though, I can blend in this cropped off wing with a texture and turn this into a piece of art. First thing I want to do is get him off of this bottom corner. So I'm going to resize him and move him up about where I want him. And the thing about birds is when they're flying, you want to give them room to fly. You don't want them right up against this edge like this. So I'm trying to resize him and scoot him where I want him to be. And I'm I, I like him in the center because my images all go on products and it's just easier to work with a centered image. And now that I've resized him, I'm actually going to go ahead and merge this, even though it's going to merge with what's underneath, just so I have a clean image to start with when it comes to masking. And then I'm going to move this other one down. All right. Now I'm going to edit his image a little bit. I want to boost his clarity, bring out some of his detail before I start doing my masking. I'll probably use some Topaz Impression on this too because he's got a little bit of noise in him. And I found that using Topaz Impression gets rid of that noise really quick. So there's fur and feathers too. Um, I'm going to bring the black level down just a little bit. So he definitely looks black and not gray. I'm just doing it very slightly, little bits at a time, till I get a look that I like. That may be a little too much. Move it back up. I don't want to lose these colors here. I'm going to click OK. Alright, now I have picked out 
this texture underneath from the Dark Portraits collection. I like the light it has right here, the darkness around here. My goal with him is to blend in the bottom of this wing with this dark area so it won't look like it's cut off. And that's what I'm going to attempt to do with the masking. Just making sure I have him position right. And I'm going to mask away. I'm going to start by masking away with a big brush all of his background. Just getting up as close to him as I can without going over him at this point. Now I'm going to make the brush size smaller. I saw somebody say recently they were having trouble with masking, um, that their mask didn't look like there was a smooth transition, that it looked kind of choppy around the edges. One way I avoid that is by the hardness being all the way down. So you want a very soft brush. If you have your hardness all the way up and you mask, you see it's going to look real choppy according to whatever brush you're using. This one only uses a round brush, but you see how choppy that looks around the edge? You don't want that. Bring your hardness all the way down. And your, um, in this case, flow is opacity. So hardness and opacity are two things to play with if you're having a problem with your mask. Excuse me. And that gets a very soft transition. And I'll go right over <clears throat> the edges of the wings. But I do want to get in here and get kind of a more tight mask. So on Topaz Photo FX Lab, there's an edge aware slider. If you move that all the way to the right, you can actually it will pick up on the edges and actually get right up to them if there's enough contrast. So you can go right up to them very easily. There's still a little white showing. But that's okay because I'll go over it later. And actually bring some of that texture right in with his feathers. Because I want him and the texture to become one. So right now I have edge wear on. So I can get right up along the wings without going over them as close as I can. And you can only, it only works well if you have enough contrast. Like right here, I want to get in between these wings. And right here, I want to get right up, especially right here. I don't want to go over these too much. I'm going to lower the brush size down so I can get closer. It's going over them some, so there must not be enough contrast. But there, it's getting closer now. But yeah, the edge of where usually only works good when there's enough contrast. And I'll go over these a little you don't always need to show everything exactly. Often a hint of something is enough because the human eye will pick up what is there just based on a suggestion of what is there. All right, now I'm going to move my edge wear back. And because I have a real small brush, I'm just going to go right along these edges a little bit. Where it's too choppy looking. That's another thing to check if you're using topaz and you're getting a choppy mask. Check to see if your edge wear is on. If it's all the if it's on all the way to the left is zero, then it's off. And if it's all the way to the right, it's on. And it's going to give you a very sharp, choppy look around the edges. That's why I like to turn it down most of the time unless I'm just trying to get as accurate as I can but then I turn it back down
And then I'm going to go back where I got uh, a little too much over the wing. And it's just back and forth like painting. And then in here, just a little bitty brush. I have some white showing there, but this texture is going to be blended over him. All right. Now is when I'm going to do that. I'm going to reduce the flow down, which is like opacity. Reduce it down as I go with a big brush, bigger brush, and just gently tap around the edges. This is going to get rid of that sharp white line that the edge of wear created, and it's going to blend in his feathers with the background. If I get a little too much feather blended away, I'll go back the other way and bring it back. But like I said, you just need a hint. That might have been a little too much. Let me undo that. Probably need to get in here with a little smaller brush. Now we'll go with a bigger brush. Just tap around those edges. This blends that texture in with him. And then we've got to work on this area. We want this hard edge of these to just disappear. So I'm just tapping gently with a very soft brush. And then like I said, if I go over it too much, I can bring back with a small brush some of these little fine areas where I want a little more wing to be wing tips to be showing. Raise the brush up a little for these. Go back over the tail. If I went over a little too much, that'll bring back some of that tail detail. Still see a little white around the edges of those tail feathers. I'm going to go back the other way with a small brush and just go right along those edges where that white is showing. Bring that texture right in with those feathers. Since the texture is similar colored, I specifically picked a dark texture for the dark bird. And because these birds have a lot of color, and I picked a dark texture with a lot of color. Even though it's a warm color in this texture, and the bird has more cool colors, I thought it would offer a nice contrast. Now, I'm going to go with a very big brush just to test something here at a very low opacity. And down here on this wing, I'm just going to tap to really fade this in and make him become one. Now, I'll go with a smaller brush so I can get in here under the neck. The important part here is this. So the rest of this can fade in nicely. And if I want to bring back some of those tail feathers, go back the other way. Still pretty low opacity. And get this li these lines in the tail feathers. All right, that looks pretty good. He looks like he's become one with the texture. I'm going to duplicate the texture now, which is what I usually do, as because I use it as a background, and then I'll use it on top, usually in soft light or multiply or overlay, sometimes hard light. Uh, by doing this, it ties everything in together and enables him to pick up some of the colors from the texture. 
So this is with the opacity all the way down on a soft light layer of the same texture on top. I'm just going to play with the slider and get it where I like it. I really like the dark, dramatic look. I'm at around 70%. That's off and that's on. And I really liked that look. Maybe it's a little strong, though. Maybe go around 50. I don't want to go too strong. I like that pretty well. Now, I see on my mask here along this bottom edge under the wing, there are still some areas I didn't mask. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go back with full opacity, try to get along these edges right here. Of, oops, wrong direction. I'm on the wrong layer. And, and uh, get along these edges just to make sure. See, I've taken that away now. I don't want any of the original edges showing. Since I did scoot him over on the texture, got to make sure you get those edges so there's no lines in here. All right. Now that looks pretty good. I think I'm going to give him a little bit more detail, so I'm going to go back to clarity and just play with that a little on his layer. And I'm going to use fur and feathers again. Like I said, I'll probably use Topaz Impression on the bird layer as well, which will bring down this noise, this clarity adjustment is bringing out quite a bit of noise. So I did the same thing, ran clarity again, lowered the black level a little bit. Waiting on it to process. We'll just see. Oh yeah, that pumped up his details a little bit more. And when it did, I could see right here, I need to bring a little texture over there. So back again with a low flow, a fairly small brush. And gently tap around this corner to fade that, fade that in with the texture. All right. I like that pretty well. Um, I think at this point I'm going to try to run Topaz Impression on the bird layer. Just in case it doesn't work right, I'm going to duplicate the bird layer, shut off the original bird layer in case I want to go back to it, and then I'll go to Topaz Impression on the duplicate. And I'll probably use my oil glaze filter, which is a very light Topaz Impression filter. And it has, I have different ones set up. I have one that has really saturated color, which I really thought would be nice with him. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's oil glaze light. Now I want you to look at the, this is before you can see the noise in there. And when you run that, oil glaze filter just kind of smooths everything out a little but this particular filter because it's such a light application it still keeps the detail in there very good and this particular one that I've set up I've got the colors um, saturated in here not the overall color but just specific colors like the orange saturation the aqua and the blue saturation are all raised up which is what's giving this nice color tones in here and I really like the way it's changed this because if you look at the texture over here these orangey tones when you run when I'm running this oil glaze filter because I've pumped up the orange saturation it's giving me some orangey tones in here um, and if any of that is showing that will be nice I don't think much of it's showing but if it does it will be nice. I'm going to click OK and see what I think of this one once I see it with the texture. Oh yeah, that really brought the colors up nice. I still feel there's a little too much of a, a white rim showing here right along these feathers. So I'm going to mask that 
with a small brush. I'm going to go over that again to blend that a little better with the texture. And right here, there's a little spot of white showing. Or gray. I guess it's gray. All right. That looks better. All right. So this is before. This is the bird photo before Topaz Impression. Very light filter. Just enough to smooth out the noise and pump up the color. And this is after. And now... In this, you can't even tell that in the original photo this wing was cut off. I still see a little masking I want to do right here along this edge. Right here, there's a little piece of white showing. Don't want any white showing there. I want that wing and that texture, that dark area to become one. And then I think I want to bring some of this wing out a little, this little tip of it. So I've gone with a small brush and going back the other way with my mask just to bring that back just a little. And if I could bring back too much, go back the other way. Okay, I like that. I think that looks good, but I want to give him a little more interest. And this month I came out with the Color Celebration Textures. And I've had one open here, and these are real splashy watercolor textures. And I decided that I wanted to try using these with him to kind of give a little more excitement to the image. So I'm just going to play with layer modes and see what I like. I like overlay. You might want to play with resizing the texture or flipping it and rotating it and then play with opacity. See, I like what it's doing everywhere, except I don't like it over the bird, and I do think it's a little strong. What I'm going to do at this point is just invert this. That takes all that overlay texture away, and then with the soft, low flow, low opacity, big, soft brush, I'm just going to tap here around the edges, where I think I might want to add a little more interest from that. A little splashy look but I don't really want to come over the bird so I'm just tapping where I think I might want it to show me some of that so that's before and that's after and then if I get too much in an area where I'm not happy with it I'll just go back the other way with the mask That just gives a little interest to this piece. I may duplicate that. That's that's very interesting too, but I may change the layer mode. Let's go with multiply. That darkens that a little bit, which keeps with the darkening of the original image I had going on. And I like that. And you can adjust the opacity of the layer. I like to do things lightly, so I'm thinking around 60% on the um, overlay one, and then on the multiply one, let's see. I like it at full opacity. So that's created a very interesting image, and I'm going to merge all of this together right now. I love these color celebration textures. I like using them by themselves if I really want to create a dynamic image and just use it as a background but they work really well for things like this like adding a, just a little interest in different layer modes on top and I just think it looks really good now let me bring back my original bird photo 
at the top. All right, there's the original photo. Not quite the original because I had resized this up. But you remember the bird was down here in this corner and there was a lot of gray space over here. And that's not the way you want to publish an image. You don't want your bird going off the side, your flying bird. You want to give him room to fly and you want to bring the focus into him. And in that original, he was way down here in the corner. And that, that just didn't work. So I resized him up, positioned him in the middle, and then blended him with the dark portraits texture, which was dark but had quite a bit of contrasting color with the warm colors contrasted with his cool colors. And then after doing the masking, I ran Topaz Impression on him to tone down his noise a little bit. And then I added the color celebration textures on top in multiply and overlay modes in different opacities and just where I put it around the edges, not over the bird because I didn't want the, the texture coming over the bird. But it did add some nice interest there. So that's where we went from before to now we got a piece of art featuring this bird. And I think it's a neat way to present this common grackle. Um, and I really like the pose of that flying shot and I really wanted to use it. And by doing it this way, I've corrected the fact that the wing was cut off. In art, you can't even tell that because that wing becomes one with that dark area of the texture. And so the eye imagines that the wing comes all the way down. The eye doesn't say, oh my, she cut that off because of the way it's blended here. It looks like he and the texture are becoming one and he's coming out of the screen. And I really, really like that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little video and maybe gives you some ideas on some things you can do with some of your bird photos. And just because they're off kilter like this one doesn't mean you can't use them. If you blend right, position them right, you can take that pose you like that even though it may be off and, and you can still use it in a piece of art. So I hope it inspires some of you. Thanks again for your support. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a great day.